Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Joe Ellis. I'm a commercial wedding and portrait photographer in Dallas, Texas. And today I want to talk about using high speed sync in your Olympus camera and flash. So high speed sync has become a, a bit of a, a rage the last few years in terms of more and more flashes have been coming out and more and more uh, photographers have been using high speed sync in their photography. And high speed sync is real simple to define. It's just your camera's ability to sync with the flash at shutter speeds over 1 250th of a second. And that uh, is actually a really powerful thing. And the main reason why you'd want to use it is if you are shooting in bright conditions and you want to use an aperture that is uh, wider than you normally could. Uh, normal flash sync speed is 1 250th of a second. And in, in using that as your maximum shutter speed with flash means that oftentimes you're having to raise uh, or close down your aperture to something like, let's say, f11 or f16 when you're outside. And so that may not be the look that you're going for. So turning on high speed sync is definitely the way around that. Now, it does have some um, limitations and uh, um, uh, things you need to know in order to make it work. When you turn on high speed sync, the first thing you have to understand is that you're going to lose a bunch of your flashes potential power. The maximum amount of flash that can come out uh, or light that can come out of your flash happens at the, at the normal sync speeds at one to one power. And once you turn on high speed sync, you're going to lose at least one stop of light just turning it on. And that means you have half the amount of light that you had a minute ago. <laughs> so if you are looking for the maximum amount of light that your flash can give you, if you're looking for the maximum ability of your flash to overpower the ambient light, you're going to want to stick to normal flash sync speeds. But if your aim is to go ahead and go outside and take a picture at f1.2 in the middle of the afternoon and still use your strobe, then you're going to want to use high speed sync. Let's look at an example. So the first picture here on the left is just straight up ambient light. And while the camera did a great job of balancing the exposure here, we have the clouds are turning out, um, Vivian is turning out, all that kind of good stuff. The main thing here is that in portraiture, generally speaking, our eye kind of goes to the brightest part of the image first. And in this case, that um, is definitely not going to be her because she is kind of in shade. And it's just not as clean or as professional, uh, polished a look as you could have. So one of the first things that I would do if I was out shooting in this scenario is I would want to add a little bit of light to this picture to make Vivian brighter. Now in the second picture, I've done the normal flash sync speed. So here you can see that the flash is the main uh, light in the picture. It's illuminating her skin really well. Um, with the downside being that I had to close the camera down to f16. And so in this case uh, here, you know, both the reunion tower and the Pegasus in the background are in perfectly sharp focus. Now, if you like that look, awesome, you're good to go. But let's say you wanted to throw them out of focus and you want just the viewer to kind of concentrate on your subject. Well, then you might want to use an aperture like 1.4. So in the uh, last example here, I've opened up to 1.4. I have closed the shutter down to 1 4,000th of a second. And I'm using high speed sync to add fill light into the picture. So here we have sort of the best of all worlds. Um, Vivian is properly lit. The background is nicely out of focus, but nothing has been blown out. And that is the power of high speed sync. Now, I want to talk about how far we can go with this. Um, now this um, depends on a lot of different factors. There's lots of ways to kind of skin this cat, but let's talk at a basic level of having a flash at a certain distance and keeping our ISO constant and assuming that it's nice and bright and sunny outside. So we're going to go ahead and use the sunny 16 rule. Now, if you've never heard of sunny 16, uh, you know, there's lots of places you can go read about it, but here's what it says. Uh, if you are shooting outside in bright sunlight, if you use an aperture of F16, then generally speaking, your shutter speed should be the same as your ISO. So in our case, um, the uh, base ISO of an Olympus camera is ISO 200. So we would use 1 200th of a second at F16. And if we're out in bright light, that should be pretty close to dead on for an exposure. So using that as a base, let's talk about how far we can push high speed sync. So our uh, shutter speed is going to raise way up and our aperture is going to go way down. So we're trying to open up the aperture and close down the shutter. So let's talk about all the equivalent exposures that we could use in whole stops. So I've gone here and uh, done a scale of shutter speeds that are possible. So we've gone from 1 200th to 1 400th to 1 800th, 
1600, 3200, 6400. At ISO six, at 1 over 6400 of a second, we're very close to the maximum shutter speed that the camera has, which is 1 8000th. We're only like uh, half a stop away. So what happens to the uh, aperture during all of this? If we move in whole stops, we're gonna go from uh, 16 to 11, to f8, to f5.6, to f4, to f2.8. So using high speed sync and the base ISO of an Olympus camera, um, the furthest we can take high speed sync in this case is f2.8 at 1 6400th of a second. If we go ahead and use the low ISO, the extended ISO range, which is 100, low or 100, they don't call it 100, but that's really what it is. Then we could go one stop further. We could go down to f1.4 and let's say 1 8,000th of a second. We might get us close. So that's as far as we can push this, okay? Now, if you have, um, cloud cover and you you get one stop back in terms of natural light or um, something like that or if you're working later in the day then all these equations would change because the ability of you to extend your aperture down to lower apertures starts um, begins with where you have to begin from so if you don't have to be at f16 and you could be at f11 at 1 200th then you can get lower and lower and lower and lower and you get more and more flexibility now as you move down this scale uh, from f16 to 1 8,000th, if we're firing the flash at 1 to 1, um, you are not getting as much light, okay? So here's what you have to remember. As soon as you get into high speed sync, okay, your flash is no longer acting like a flash. Normally, when you have it under the sync speed, uh, the normal sync speed, your flash power is not affected by your shutter speed. It's only affected by your aperture, okay? All the flash gets into the camera no matter what setting you use, okay? Whatever power, flash power you're getting, all that's getting into the camera during the exposure. Once you move into high speed sync, if you start using shutter speeds like 1 400th, 1 800th, 1 1600th, what's happening there is that the amount of flash getting into the camera is getting less and less and less and less and less as you move up the shutter speeds. So by the time you get to 1 8000th of a second, you're gonna get two or three stops less flash than you did at, um, at the beginning. So let's say during this whole process, you've lost three or four stops of power on your flash. Okay, that is going to drastically affect the working distance that you can have and still make this work. So uh, generally speaking, photographers do a couple of things. Uh, one of the things they do is they buy more than one of these small flashes. They might buy three or four of them and they gang them up and they put them all in the same bracket and fire them all at the subject at the same time, syncing them all up over um, the wireless system. And that's a great way to get back two or three times as much light and that'll work. Um, it's a bit of a cumbersome thing to set up, but uh, it does have a great deal of flexibility because, of course, these small flashes can be used in a million different ways. Another way they do it these days is that lots of the larger studio style heads have high speed sync capabilities. Uh, Pro Photo has announced a ton of them, um, Braun Color, Ellen Chrome, and Godox. And so the Godox flashes I use on top of my camera use the same wireless system with their studio style heads. This guy here is the smallest one um, of the sort of larger <laughs> size flash heads that um, Godox makes. Godox makes an AD600, an AD400, and then they make the AD200. This 200 uh, watt second strobe is three or four times as powerful as one of these on-camera lights, which means I can use one of these in place of that and get my high speed sync. Or if I'm really pushing it, I can use two of these AD200s in parallel, and then I have a lot of stopping power. So uh, just know that if you are trying to overpower the sun with your high speed sync and you have only a small strobe, you're gonna have a very difficult time. What you really need to do this properly is probably three or four of these to kind of get that job done. On the other hand, if what you're trying to do is get fill light into the camera, you're not trying to necessarily overpower the sun, just sort of fill it in, then one of these small strobes or a couple of these small strobes is just the ticket. And to be honest with you guys, that is probably my favorite way to use these flashes in high speed sync, is not overpowering the ambient light, it's actually matching or filling in that ambient light. So let's look at what that kind of comes out uh, being in a photograph. So I'm gonna pull up three other pictures here just kind of to illustrate my point. 
So in the first photo here on the left, that's the ambient, uh, just ambient light. There's no flash in that picture at all. And you can see, again, it's not a terrible situation. It's a little bit muddy. There's no catch lights in the eyes. And generally speaking, I love to kind of add a little extra punch to that picture. So in the middle exposure here, I'm using the high-speed sync as a fill light. It's actually firing uh, one and a half stops under the ambient exposure. So it's just adding into that shadow and cleaning up the picture in terms of how her skin tone looks. Um, and I really love the way that kind of feels. Again, we are getting that out of focus background in this picture. So we don't have the building in focus, um, but you can see the background is plenty bright. Okay, the background is not darker than the subject. And that's of course the hallmark of when you're using a flash as a key light, as a main light, generally speaking, the background is gonna be darker than the subject. And that's what's happening here in the third picture. And the reason I was able to do this with an on-camera flash is that I'm only about one or two feet away from her. And at that working distance, even a small flash can, can make this happen. Um, now, I don't prefer this look. I prefer the middle look. Uh, I think it looks a little unnatural and it definitely looks very flashed if you use um, a flash as a main light out in bright conditions. The flash is coming from a different direction than the sun, then you're immediately going to notice that it's a flash photo. And you can see the harder shadow under her chin, the stronger catch lights, and um, of course the darker background. So it really kind of depends on what you're uh, looking for in terms of your photography, in terms of the aesthetic that you want. But fill flash is a great way to go. It's something that I practice all the time and it certainly has a nice subtle effect on your photographs. So if you're going out trying high speed sync for the first time or if all you have is one of these small flashes, think about using it in that capacity. Really simple to do, you just turn on high speed sync and then turn your flash exposure compensation down to minus one or minus one and a half. And that's really all you need to do. And you can even have it fire from camera because it's weak and it's not going to be creating the major shadows in the photo. It's less important where the light is coming from or how soft it is. Okay, so let's talk about two other things. Uh, one thing that can really help you in this endeavor is remembering the inverse square law, uh, which I don't wanna go into that whole thing here, but here's my cliff note on that. If you can move your light from uh, whatever distance it would normally be at, let's say when you're using normal sync, let's say 10 feet, and you turn on high speed sync and you can move your light to five feet, you just gained a fourfold increase in the amount of light hitting your subject. So that's buying you back two stops of light. And that is a great way to kind of overcome the limitations of losing the flash power when you turn on high speed sync. So always when you're using high speed sync, try and keep the light as close as you possibly can to your subject without getting into your composition and you will be maximizing the efficiency of the flash. Okay, the other option that you have is one that I've already actually gone over in another video and that is if you don't wanna use high speed sync, you could use an ND filter. An ND filter goes on the front of your lens and it is just like a sunshade for the lens. Uh, not a sunshade, it's like uh, blocking some of the light getting into the camera. And it will block not only the flash power, but the ambient light as well. So let's say you put three stops of ND on your uh, camera. Now you can open up your aperture three stops and you're gonna get the same equivalent amount of light getting into the camera as you were before. Now, the upside here is that you do not lose efficiency from the flash. The flash stays at a normal sync speed. You're able to open up the aperture, and so you're gonna gain some flash power back there. The other really handy thing about using an ND filter is that you can vary the ISO of the camera to get back some of the light if you run out of uh, capability at one end or the other in terms of flash power or uh, aperture. Now, the downside to using um, ND filters on the front of your camera is that you've got increased com uh, complexity. You've got to add the ND filter. ND filters can be really dark, so it can be difficult to see through the camera in those scenarios. And of course, you are adding glass to the optical path. So if you don't um, buy a really high quality ND filter, then you could degrade your image quality but they're both great tools and can be used in different scenarios. So I love high speed sync. It's really easy to use. You just turn on high speed sync on your flash and you're good to go. Raise your shutter speed, lower your aperture, you're off to the races. 
Um, and of course, it's always available to you. And the downside again is that as soon as you turn it on, you're gonna lose some flash power. And to really do a job of overpowering the ambient light in bright conditions, you're gonna need more light than you probably have um, coming out of one strobe, assuming you're working at distances like, uh, normal distances of like five or 10 feet uh, for your strobe light. So guys, that's some notes I have on high speed sync. I hope this was uh, informational. Let me know what questions you have in the comments and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one.